I think so. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the St. Tammany Parish Planning Commission meeting of September the 14th. It's been rescheduled to uh, October the 12th. Will the clerk please call the roll? Seeger. Here. Ress. Here. McInnes. Here. Willie. Here. Doherty. Here. Barcelona. Here. Fitzmorris. Here. Crawford. Here. Randolph. Here. Truxilla. Here. Mr. Chairman, we have a quorum. Thank you. Mm. Public announcements, please silence all phones and electronic devices. If you have an appeal, there are appeals cards over on the platform or the uh, end of the railing to my right, and you have the right to appeal to the council. Speaker cards, they're over there with the appeal cards. Uh, public speaking, 10 minutes each side and five minutes for rebuttal. After your case is heard, uh, please exit the building. Please rise for the invocation. <clears throat> by uh, Commissioner Randolph and Commissioner Seeger, you do the pledge, please. <clears throat> Gracious Father, once again, we come to you as humble as we know how, but with thanksgiving and praise in our hearts as we recognize and was well received of your grace and mercy throughout this day. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be with our commissioners. Bless this meeting. Bless Bless our, our, our citizens that we serve. And, Lord, we ask that you bless families in a mighty way. And we ask a special blessing upon the Stefansic family, as well as good cheers and success to Mr. Bill, who just retired from the former. And all these blessings we ask in your holy name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, uh, commissioners, in your packet uh, was the August minutes. Hopefully, you've had an opportunity to review them. Commissioner Crawford. The minutes. Motion by Commissioner Crawford to accept the minutes. Commissioner Randolph. Second. Second by Commissioner Randolph. Please vote. The motion to approve carries. Thank you. Staff, we have any postponements? Request to postpone. However, I just want to bring to your attention that number three on the agenda, 2021 28, 20, I'm sorry, 2021 2508 MSP has been withdrawn. We just received a request to withdraw uh, uh, today. So I just wanted to bring it to your attention uh, and also maybe ask if anyone is here in the audience in. In regards to this case, just wanted to advise them that the case has been withdrawn and will not be heard this evening. 2508. 2508. Okay, is that the only only one, Helen? Yes. Okay. Um, I have some information. Commissioner McGinnis. This happens to be uh, 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 a, a neighbor of mine. Mm -hmm. And they were prepared to come in September, but in October, their son's wedding conflicted with tonight, and it's out of state. So that, I thought he was going to, I, he told me he was going to be rescheduled for November. And I questioned the same um, today, that at first he had requested to, um, to postpone and then I received another request. To withdraw. I'm pretty per sure it's. Please withdraw my, my request for the minor subdivision. 
he probably didn't know what the word withdraw means. And I, I, I mean, I'll be happy to pull up my emails because I just wanted uh -huh. to make sure well, that we were all on the same page in that regards. If we withdraw, what does that mean? Can it get back on the November schedule? Or no, ma'am, the owner would have to reapply. Um, if you want to just give me a, a moment. Um, would it hurt to just put it in November? I mean, postpone till November? Commissioner McInnes, if you wanted to table this matter to the end of the meeting, and try to contact this individual and see if postponement oh, or idea. withdrawal is appropriate. Uh -huh. That may be the best course of action. I, I sent the following email, and not to contradict yourself, uh, legal counsel, but please note that if you withdraw your request, you will have to resubmit and reapply and pay the fees. I, I just want to make sure that you still want to withdraw re request and not only postpone. And the answer I have back is, thanks, Helen, but I do want to withdraw. Yeah, let's, could we move it to the end, Mr. Chairman, to the end of the uh, meeting? Yeah, give me a, uh, a motion to postpone to the end of the meeting. Motion to table. Or table. A, a motion to t table number three, uh, number 2508 to the end of the meeting, of the September meeting. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner McKinnis to table. Second. Uh, item three, Commissioner Willie. Second. Second by Commissioner Willie. Please vote. The motion to table is approved. Carries, I'm sorry. Okay, so just in case there was anyone here in the audience, let me read it to just be sure that everybody's on the same page here. It's case number 2021-2508-MSP. It's a minor subdivision of 113.457 acres and the parcels A, B, and C. The owners and representatives are Woodland Group Partnership, uh, James D. Shearer, uh, Parish Council District Representatives, Honorable Martha Casabon. General location, the parcels located on the east side of Louisiana 1077, north of Tantilla Ranch Road, Covington, Ward 1, District 3. So that has been tabled to the end of the meeting and to give Commissioner Pekinis uh, an opportunity to try and get uh, in touch with the, the owner. All right, Helen, is there any other item? Yes, we'd like to request to move, um, move up the text change 2021-2486. Okay. All right, this is on the... Uh, Page three, um, been asked to move this up and uh, here it, uh, right at the beginning. It's a text change, it's item 11. It's 2021-2486, text change, an ordinance to amend the St. Tammany Code of Ordinances, chapter 125-88, to incorporate updated and new criteria and standards for design and location of drainage ditches, channels, canals, and similar drainage features, including subsurface drainage. This was postponed from the August uh, 10th meeting. Staff? Yes, ma'am. If someone could uh, connect my computer, we have a PowerPoint that we'll go through very quickly to demonstrate pictorially the need for the changes. And while we're waiting, I just want to point out to the commission that you should have the corrected version with the strikeouts and underlines at your seats. The version that was in the packet did not include uh, the proper formatting that's required of the ordinance. So you should have that corrected version and there should be copies available for the public as well if anyone would like a copy. Yeah, just introduce yourself. Just introduce yourself. Is that the PowerPoint you're looking for? Um, yes, sir, that's it. Okay. My name is Debbie Henton. I'm an assistant district attorney for, uh, and I represent St. Tammany Parish government. And I and several parish departments and other attorneys in the civil division have been working on a modification to 125-88 for several years. 
Um, and these pictures that will follow will show why there's a need for these changes. Because drainage servitudes overlap private property and they are in subdivisions that are either public or private and they've when they're located on private lots and subdivisions in St. Timothy Parish, the problems that can arise are that the drainage feature is too large to be located on a lot that's not sized to accommodate the drainage feature and a residence. Um, number two, the property owner has constructed something on top of or across the servitude which obstructs the access or the drainage itself, um, regardless of whether the subdivision is public or private. And then number three, the private lot owner has constructed something across the drainage servitude that would prevent the developer from being able to remove a warranty obligation. Here's some examples. This is a 1935 subdivision. 2007 um, <coughs> development though of the, of the minor uh, subdivision. And you can see that there's a big drainage feature across lot 1B and lot 1A. And you can see that the house is squeezed in in the aerial photograph at the very bottom of this huge drainage feature. The, the house is too close to the ditch and it may encroach actually into the 15 foot drainage servitude on that subdivision. Rayford Oaks. This is a 2012 subdivision, phase 2A. It's between lots 56 and 57. You can see on the subdivision plat that there is a drainage servitude that runs between those two lots. And then the actuality from the street picture, you can see that the person's uh, house and probably, uh, well, the driveway and probably part of the house is over that drainage servitude. Now, this is a parish drainage servitude. Forest Brook, phase 4C4, 2003 subdivision between lots 217 and 218. You can see that there's a drainage servitude on the subdivision plat. This is a private drainage servitude. So what this means is that not the parish, some of the homeowners association is going to be responsible for maintaining this drainage. You can see that there is a fence across the two very large culverts. Forest Brook phase 4C4, 2003 western boundary, multiple homes. The western boundary of Forest Brook has a 20-foot uh, drainage servitude, and those are the homeowner's responsibility to maintain. But the aerial photograph clearly shows that the homeowners themselves have constructed fences across that drainage servitude, so there will be no access, there will be no drainage. Forest Brook 4C4, again, lots 229 and 230. You can see that here's the drainage servitude and the recorded plat, and the homeowners are responsible to maintain this, and it's very, very close. Grand Oaks, phase 2B, 2015 subdivision between lots 177 and 178. You can see the drainage servitude. This is a combination subdivision, public and private drainage, but this is a parish drainage servitude, and there is a 20-foot drainage servitude there, and people have constructed fences across it. Will not be able to be maintained. Robindale subdivision from 1960. You can see that there's a very large drainage feature that goes within five feet behind this house. Grand Maison, phase one, 2006, between lots 51 and 52. You can see that this is a parish drainage feature, and you can see that fences have been constructed over the two large culverts in Grand Maison. 807 Montmartre Street in Mandeville. This is an old subdivision, but it is a 1984 resub. And you can see on the resub that no drainage features were depicted on the survey that was attached to the resub. But there's a huge drainage feature running diagonally across what looks like lots six, seven, and eight. And that's the picture from the street. And you can see that the fence um, from someone's backyard is constructed across that parish, very large parish drainage servitude. Wing Haven, 1995, lots 19, 20, and 21. This is another combination, public and private. So the parish took in the roads and the roadside drainage, but that pond is a privately maintained pond that has never really been maintained. It's silted in and it is very now close to that house 
that is um, lot 20. Penn Mill Lakes, phase, it's a 2003 subdivision, lot 265. Penn Mill Lakes didn't have any, um, has a five foot setback, but the lake was built right up to the edge of where the um, lake area was supposed to be, so it's five feet away from that house. Grand Oaks, phase 2A1, between lots 113 and 114. This is a 2014 subdivision. You can see that not only were, this is a parish drainage servitude, you can see that not only were fences constructed across the drainage servitude, but somebody extended their driveway um, over the drainage servitude. Uh, Grand Oaks again, between 114 and 115, you can see fences constructed across the drainage servitude. More fences, more concrete. Laurelwood, phase two, this is 1998. It is a, an oddly shaped lot, lot 76. And this is a, you can see where the, the drainage servitude goes under someone's driveway and then is, leads to, it drains to a retention pond at the back of the house. And the driveway is on top of our drainage servitude. Ruel Duchenne, 2003, between lots 46 and 47, you can see someone put fences across the drainage servitude, and it looks like a house generator that was in the drainage servitude as well. This is a parish drainage. Beauchenne, this is private drainage, section 3, phase 2A and 2B. This drainage servitude is 10 feet on either side, and the setback for building is 10 feet. So what that means is that this home is built on the edge of the servitude. So you have this huge ditch draining from Tetlors to uh, Bayou Tetlors. Um, it, it's just not supposed to be there. Paraloo Trace, 2018, you can see that the, there's a drainage servitude running along the back of these lots and you can see where someone built a built a fence you know, outside of the drainage servitude, and then you can see where another neighbor built the fence across the drainage servitude. The problem with this one is that there's a warranty obligation that remains outstanding, and until those obstructions can be removed and the parish can take this drainage into its maintenance system, um, the warranty obligation will not be released, nor will its security. So the conclusion is that um, 12588 is need, it needs amending. It needs amending to make sure that there will be no drainage servitude, whether it be public or private, that is located on a private lot. And that's probably, you know, one of the reasons is usually people just don't understand the concept of a drainage servitude on a lot. But regardless, um, these amendments need to be made. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Deborah. Uh, let's see if we have any. Uh, questions or any further staff comments on this commissioner do you have any questions for Deborah mr. Seeger over here ma'am yes sir um, I don't understand some of the wording uh, the repeal does that mean that these existing things are going to be allowed to Stand as they are. Yes, sir. Thank you. Commissioner Randolph. Ms. Hinton, um, to follow up or to piggyback that question, does being allowed to stay as they are means that there will not be any, any corrections made to the structures that's, that's over the... Servitude? That's, Mr. Randolph, that's a great question. And there is plenty of statutory and ordinance support to allow the parish to remove any obstruction of a drainage servitude. But unfortunately, in some of those circumstances, those structures are, are I mean, a driveway. And so that will be very difficult to overcome that obstacle. Um, so the, the best we, we thought we could do is to try and stop the bleeding and to try and get it right from here on out. Um, um, additionally, we met with the homeowners, the Home Builders Association, and we asked for input from them. Um, and we received a little input, but, you know, we didn't really 
um, find that um, it was a comment about liability and there was that liability wouldn't really be relevant to our discussion and that was about it. Okay. Commissioner Willie. Well, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Well, <clears throat> I noticed that most of these photos that you've given and thank you for your presentation very very good. Okay. Um, was I noticed that most of them were prior to 2012. I think it's only one that was 2018. Um, is there anything that we as commissioners can do to avoid, to eliminate, to eradicate any development that would come in to try to construct over or even a home, well, not a homeowner's association, but development to, to even try to construct over a servitude. I think that with might, or without this, <laughs> we, the for the subdivisions that have been approved in the past with drainage servitudes overlapping private property, I think that we uh, face a, a very uphill battle trying to rectify maybe misunderstandings um, and the ability of a person who has bought a buildable lot in an approved subdivision. Okay. All right, that's all. Thank you so much. Commissioner Willie. That's uh, over here. Uh, in the photos, I noticed uh, all the encroachments. She talked about the driveways, the houses, the fences. But when I was looking at the photos, I saw a lot of utilities like uh, telephone utilities and sewer, you know, uh, apparatuses in those uh, servitudes. So what what happens there? Because you got a lot of utility, you know. I don't know if they're allowed to be in there like a phone phone system. Well, there may be overlapping servitudes. That's correct. Okay, so they, they are right to have uh, like you know, utility servitudes within the drainage servitude. Um, yes, sir. Sometimes. Okay. Okay depending upon the circumstances. Okay, but something else we have to look at. Yes, sir. Mr. Yeah. Riss. Yeah, a question I have is, um, so if subdivisions approved and build out, but people live there forever and fences go up forever and you don't even know they're going up, there isn't anything that the parish wouldn't be involved at that time, so fences could easily be reconstructed across to drainage servitude. Uh, some things should be permitted, such as generators and things, I would imagine, and and that would probably be a trigger when hopefully at that point. But if it's an unpermitted type of activity, uh, shed, uh, things that, you know, under 100 square feet, uh, there's different things, and how, how does that get taken care of? These things could keep going on even though I think you'd avoid some of these major ones by your ordinance. There's no doubt in my mind you wouldn't have a driveway across it, probably. <laughs> but yes, the add-ons to driveways will still occur. Yes, sir. That's true. Um, the drainage servitudes on a subdivision plot are imprescriptible, meaning that they, even though someone would have built a house um, or a fence, usually a fence across a drainage servitude or an access servitude, um, be it for the parish or for an HOA, um, those would have to be removed when it became a problem. So there are so, mechanisms. So you'd have a better chance of enforcing it after the fact if we needed to do maintenance on the serv in the service. Oh, yes. Okay. I would point out, though, at this time, <clears throat> the servitudes are on private property. What's being proposed is that the servitudes are not on someone's private property. Correct. So if they were to extend their drive or build a fence, it would no longer be on their property. Whereas as of now, with the servitude being on the property, it, they are just still on their property, just going over the servitude. But removing the servitude from their property hopefully eliminates that as well, because okay. then it would be beyond their. It would their be property beyond lines. their yeah. lot line. Yeah, okay, yeah. gotcha. Thank you. Thanks for that. <coughs> Commissioner Truxilla. Uh, yes, I appreciate the, uh, the verb is change, and I understand why you're doing it. Uh, but I don't understand why, if you see obstructions there, that could be, 
uh, impede drainage, that we're not going to do anything about it. The idea is that, for example, if a driveway was constructed over a drainage servitude, there is no impediment at this time, but there would be no ability to access or to maintain the drainage servitude if something became a problem later on. So the fences is not impeding the, the flow of, of, of water? Not necessarily. Um, since, since Hurricane Ida, um, the Department of Public Works is um, working on assessing all of the drainage servitudes in the parish and is preparing to send out notifications to those persons who have constructed or placed obstacles in drainage servitudes where it is evident that drainage is impeded. Okay, uh, this is a question to the staff. Does any of these obstructions y'all saw today would impede the flow of water, in your opinion? Uh, that's a difficult question based on a photograph. I haven't been to the site, okay. so it's just, I wouldn't make that assumption on a photograph. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am, appreciate it. Mr. Crawford. Okay, one, uh, one or two questions. Uh, it's a lot to take in, real quick, um, but I think I found what I was looking for, which I believe is what Ross explained, that uh, going forward, a subdivision has to have dedicated right-of-ways, not part of a lot, correct? Well, yes, sir. So a, a right-of-way is a common law term that's interchangeable with servitude. Mm -hmm. So this would be actual ownership. So it would either be the HOA or the parish that would own the property on which this drainage servitude is located. Okay, but it would not be a private lot. That's correct. Okay. The, whole, the whole point is that there would be no overlap of a person's private property and a parish or an HOA drainage servitude. Okay, and a subsurface drainage uh, right-of-way or servitude would be 10 feet on either side, either side of the subsurface piping? Not necessarily, sir. It would be dependent upon the situation. Okay. And the, the open, an open ditch is 15 feet on one side and 5 feet on the other side for, for access? Generally speaking, that's correct. Okay. And a homeowner that has a lot next door would not be able to build anything within 20 feet of the top of the bank of that ditch. Is that correct? I believe so. As I'm reading. Ted, do you know? I see Ted shaking his head. Is that, is that the case? I believe that is the language in there. Okay. Okay. That seems like that would take care of it, especially being a dedicated piece of property. And I think that's great. It takes it out of the, the realm of the, the homeowner, the individual homeowner. Okay, that's all I had. Okay, Commissioner Seeger? I will defer to legal and then... I would like to ask my questions. Okay. I just wanted to clarify based on Commissioner Truxilla's questions and Commissioner Ress's questions that it's not that the parish cannot or will not address some of these other situations that you saw in the pictures and other situations where other things have been constructed in the parish drainage rights of way or even private drainage rights of way. It's just that this ordinance, 12588, the changes that are going to proposed to be made are perspective only. So we can still deal with other cases on a case-by-case -case basis, but generally speaking, the law change will be prospective for future building and subdivisions. Tom, you got a question? Yes. Um, we're all very concerned about flooding, and this is a, um, an attempt to alleviate that it's not going to work simply because we can't clean our natural drainages out or we're not cleaning our natural drainages. So we may be able to do something in the neighborhood, but all of the neighborhoods run to a natural drainage area, and especially after Ida, even before Ida, they're not cleaned. Water cannot flow unrestricted. It backs up. Nothing we do at this level is going to help until we address that problem. That being said, I do move that we accept this, uh, this change in verbiage in the uh, ordinance. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner 
Seeker to accept the verbiage change in the ordinance. Uh, Commissioner McInnes. I have a question on um, if the parish or the HOA owns it, I'm assuming they're responsible for maintaining such as mowing um, and could, but you said it's not prescriptive. So if the neighbors did mow it and maintain it, it's still going to be owned by the original entity, correct? I'm really not sure what you're asking. So, so what oh. I think you may be asking is that with the ordinance changes, the parish would own the land and if there is an overlap of the underlying land ownership and a parish or an HOA drainage servitude, there may be homeowner maintenance mowing. I'm not really sure what no, you're do, asking. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just trying to think, do we suddenly want to have the parish owning all these ditches and having to mow them regularly? you know, and maintain them. It seems like having it owned by the HOA would be preferable. Um, I, I don't know that this ordinance change, it doesn't specify either, is that correct? Either, either specify either what? HOA or parish, it, it, there's an option of who owns the servitude, drainage. It would be the it would be owned by whoever's responsible to maintain the drainage. Okay, well, I'm just going to make a comment that, guys, I would put it in the HOA because I don't think you want to be having to send people out, you know, mowers out once a week to mow all these ditches. Um, that would be a lot of burden on the parish. Now let me. Uh interrupt right there almost all of the subdivisions that we approve and I'm saying all of the subdivisions we approve you will see that the HOA is responsible for the maintenance of uh, around the retention ponds uh, over any drainage servitudes and there's a lot of people that don't understand that and we get down to it, all of a sudden, we are end up in court. I can tell you in the subdivision that I live in, the way it was designed, the boulevard uh, down the main thoroughfare is supposed to be maintained by the homeowners association. And if we have 50 people out of 625 that are members of the homeowners association, we've got a good year. It just doesn't work unless you have mandatory homeowners associations that have to do this. And somebody's got to follow up at some point in time to be sure that it's getting done, whether it's grass cutting, whether it's drainage. If it comes back to the HOA, it has to be done. Let me go to Commissioner Randolph. I'd like to second the motion um, that may offer further discussion. I'd like to second it. Okay. We have a motion and a second on the floor. Is there any further discussion? Okay. You out in the, in the public have heard the discussion on this, and I don't know, I, I'm hoping that you've understood what we were talking about. Do you happen to have any comments or wish to make any comments? Seeing no one, I'm going to close it to the public and bring it back to the commission for a vote. Please vote. The motion to approve the verbiage in the text change is approved. Carries as approved. Thank you all, Deborah. Thank you. I mean, this, this is a, a start in the right direction. I've seen so many ditches. Right now, I'm working 
a little bit with the uh, public works trying to figure out how do we get rid of all the elephant ears in St. Tabby there. Yes, <laughs> Thank you. All right, we're going to go back to the first part of the agenda. All right, Helen, we didn't have any postponements entering the right of way, servitudes, easements, and we don't have any of those. We got a revocation review. Item one, uh, REV 21 07 00 C. The revocation of an unknown portion of Caroline Street located east of Salt Street and west of Molitor Street between square 166 and square 175 in the town of Mandeville subdivision, Mandeville, Louisiana, Ward 4, District 7. The applicant is Bruce M. Ennis, Parish Council District Representative, Honorable James Davis, staff. Yeah, the applicant is uh, requesting to uh, revoke an unopened portion of Caroline Street. And they wish to assimilate this into the uh, adjacent residential property, and staff has no objections. Thank you. Mr. Shane. Uh, good evening. Uh, Jeff Shane of the Jones Fusel Law Firm, P.O. Box 1810 in Covington, uh, representing the property owners and petitioners, Dr. and Mrs. Bruce M. Ennis, who seek to revoke uh, this uh, one block of Caroline uh, we're in full accord uh, with the staff report and appreciate the recommendation. If any of you have any questions, I would be glad to address them. Otherwise, we would appreciate your consideration uh, of a vote to revoke this right of way. Thank okay. you much. Thank you. Anyone in the audience wish to speak for or against this item? Seeing no one, I will bring it back to the commission. Uh, Commissioner Ress. Yeah, Jeff, I got a question for you. I'm sorry. Are they on square 166 or 175? Do you know offhand? What they currently Your own? client? The sure. Uh, they own 166. 175 is being developed. Okay, so my, my question is, and I don't have any problem with the revocation at all, does the, the people that own 175, are they aware that this has taken place? Is there notification to those people? Yes, sir. Through the normal process? So, what happens is in order to revoke, a petition has to be filed by all property owners that are contiguous. So we procured not only the permission of the property owner to the north, but they also agreed to allow my clients to purchase their half of the right of way, that's, assuming this revocation okay. occurs. That's what I was kind of wondering, like whoever first gets it. And I didn't know if that seemed right. So. Well, no, first doesn't mean you no, get I, it. I get No, I, that's what I didn't want to see happen. But, but there is a process, okay. and uh, everyone was uh, informed okay. and actually has signed off, and we filed that with the parish. All right, thank you. I move to approve. Motion by Commissioner Rest to approve. Commissioner Randolph. Second. Second by Commissioner Randolph. Any further discussion? Please vote. Motion to approve carries. Thank you. Next item, REV 21-08-004, the revocation of an unopened portion of Schubert Lane located <coughs> north of Gina Deeney Lane and south of Low Davis Road, northeast of Abita Springs, uh, Ward 10, District 6. The applicant is James R. Young and Karen M. Fontana Young. Parish Council District Representative, Honorable Cheryl Tanner. Staff? The applicant is uh, requesting to revoke the unopened portion of Schubert Lane to assimilate that property into the adjacent residential properties which they uh, all own. The um, unopened portion of Schubert Lane that the petitioner is seeking to revoke was uh, dedicated to the parish as part of the Schubert Lane Minor Subdivision. Um, and uh, it's on file with the clerk of courts. And essentially what they are looking to do is to, uh, to uh, revoke that and assimilate into the regular properties. Okay. Uh, I have a card here from uh, Karen Young. Yes, thank you. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Karen Fontana Young. I'm one of the owners. My husband uh, could not be here. He's uh, on duty. Um, 
I did give you guys a little packet of photos because when we talk about Schubert Lane, it's a little confusing because there's really three parts of Schubert Lane and they're all very different. It's one contiguous um, entity. But, it's, but it, So in your little packet that I gave you, you can see the photo. The only part that we're trying to address is at the very, very end. Roy Schubert had a large cattle farm and he broke this off into minor subdivisions as he went along. The part of Schubert Lane that's actually paved here with houses, that's where all the city services are. We're not talking about that. You, you leave city services, you leave mail, you leave garbage collection behind, and you go into a gravel road here. We're still not talking about that. That gravel road uh, serves Mr. Schubert's um, former home, which is now owned by the Topinos. Uh, you follow it around, a little more gravel. Nobody goes back there, not even the parish. And you come across a, um, a tract of land at the back. That's what we're talking about. Our tract of land is, well, it was a 10-acre square, basically, fenced on three sides. Uh, it was a cattle farm. When we went to purchase it from the Schuberts, we found out that he had actually, at one point, wanted to do five lots back here and had applied for a minor subdivision in 2010. So he had subdivided this into five parcels, and to do so, as you know, he needed to provide a right-of-way. So he had donated a uh, small little you know, spur right into the center of this property that would serve those five lots. He had, it, he had the idea that he was going to sell that off. Well, it never happened. The road was never built. The subdivision was never built. The tracks were never sold off. So when we went to the Schuberts to, to purchase this 10-acre, which it's best used as agricultural rural. I mean, this is very remote. The road behind it, that doesn't exist either. <laughs> That's a forest. But uh, we want to just return it back to the way it was, back to being a rural agricultural 10-acre lot. We would hope to eventually be able to build a home on it, but it is going to be farmland. Uh, and so when we found out that this was on record, we talked to the, the sellers, the Schuberts, about it. And they didn't want to go through the process of the reversion uh, because as, I, I don't know if the, if the commission ever uses the reversionary rights portion of the statute. I did put the statute in the packet as well because the normal process obviously is the cash sale after you all would approve an application for revocation. But there actually is another provision in there where you would revoke a road and instead of it going to cash sale, it would go through a reversionary rights process. That's why I included the statute just for easy reference. So if you look at section D under the ordinance section, it actually says um, that you have to put in your ordinance when you're revoking a road, whether it's going uh, through a cash sale, which is the appraisal process we're all familiar with, or ownership is being transferred pursuant to reversionary rights. So you have to go down to section uh, F for the reversionary rights, and there's two little categories. One is if the property has not been in control of the parish for 10 years, and the second is if the applicant or the original grantor of the donation uh, is asking for it back, or if one of his heirs or legatees is asking for it back. I would ask that this commission consider us under the reversionary rights provision, because we did purchase the reversionary rights from the Schuberts, um, this is just a big old paper mess that they started a process, didn't finish it, wanted it back, sold it to us. We actually included it in our act of sale that we were paying for their reversionary rights. If not, either way, we really just want this whole little mess in 2010 put back so we can put the property back into use. Uh, and so I would ask the commission to consider our request to revoke this, this dedication. There's absolutely no servitudes on it. There's, I mean, there's no, oh, excuse me, misspoke. There's no utilities on it. Uh, there's no utilities in that area at all. Uh, but having that servitude there prevents us from putting our well in for irrigation for this area. For, it prevents us from fencing the front of it. And actually, um, in your little packet, you see and it's just this tiny little piece that serves no one but our property. It does not go all the way through. Even if it did, there is no road in existence back there. I think there's a, like, just like this, there's a dedicated road that just was never built. I mean, it's just, it's just farmland. So I would ask that, uh, and although we, we have cleaned it up, <laughs> it does look better, but it, there's, there's nothing back there. So I'd ask that the commission would consider our application and, and allow that road to be revoked. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. All right. Is there anyone in the audience wish to speak in favor of this revocation? Anyone wish to speak against this revocation? I'll close it to the public and bring it back to the commission. Commissioner Seeger. I love your idea of combining all the property into one, putting it back into use. I move to approve. Motion by Commissioner Seeger to approve. Commissioner McInnes. 
Um, I will second that, but I also have a question or more of a comment. Uh, I hope that you appreciate um, the almost 1,000-acre nature preserve that is very close to this property, the Abita Creek Flatwoods Preserve that I used to manage for the Nature Conservancy. And uh, I hope you don't mind smelling smoke just one or two days a year, not much, for the uh, uh, management of that critically important Longleaf Pine savanna habitat. Well, I, if you don't mind me responding briefly, um, we are beekeepers, and the only thing we've been able to put out there so far are some of our bees, and I can tell you the bees really like that nature preserve, and I think it's going to be an excellent bee yard. I mean, it's just beautiful, beautiful Oh, land. yes, definitely. Yes. I'm right. very appreciative of that preserve being there. Excellent. Well, good. I just wanted to mention that. Yes, thank you. And, you know, if you ever did redivide it and want to sell it, um, there's some, something that we've developed um, that uh, is an acknowledgement to any prospective buyer of uh, uh, that there would be prescribed burning nearby. Just so if anyone who's asthmatic or whatever is sure. notified um, of the uh, uh, management of that nature preserve. So well, consider that. Question. Yes, thank you. All right. Thank you. So I Mr. Willie. Just so uh, so I can understand it. The, the minor subdivision will be erased that we talked about. Will those lots still be lots of record? We would like to have them erased. Um, I mean, because if we revoke that parcel, then you got uh, landlocked pieces of property. I actually had That's asked if it at. was possible to, for, and I, and I don't know what the procedural would be, if, if this body would be able to do it, but I had actually wondered if this body couldn't revoke the acceptance of the the um the minor subdivision entirely i mean because I, we certainly don't want it well, seems like that needs to happen before you revoke the road to me because if not you land locking property is that am i understanding well, we, this right or, or you could order us to file for the minor uh, subdivision to be revoked as part of this approval process like make it contention on us filing that so Bernie, i have no i have no problem help with me that. out here let's get a comment from uh, yeah uh, and, uh, emily and that is, if you look in the recommendation of the staff report, that is one of the staff um, comments. So I do believe that the motion to approve should be subject to this staff comments, which requires the combination of those lot lines into a single parcel. So right. it's got to be done before the revocation is complete. It's kind of a chicken and an egg situation. Because if not, you end up with landlocked But property. the approval should be contingent on that happening. So if the motion can be okay. made subject to those staff comments, that should occur in in the future in order for the revocation to take place. And, uh, and I had a point of information. And, and, and I think what the petitioner was uh, wanting to do it was to actually uh, revoke the actual uh, subdivision, have it revert back. Uh, according to the parish, uh, the parish ordinance, um, that actually requires it to actually go through a public uh, hearing and for them to actually file an application for a resubdivision and, and our resubdivision well, back to the original lot. Well, so. should that happen before the revocation of that roadway? Well, yeah, that's going to, it's going to be, a, it's going to be a condition okay. of it. But the, the, like you. the problem with doing it in reverse is we don't have ownership of that land, so we can't make oh, it one continuous. I thought you owned the land. Well, the land, the parish owns that. I thought you own the, the five lots. We, we own the five lots, but but the parish owns right through the center of them. Because you can you know, go back to the process of uh, combining the lots to make one parcel, and that would solve that problem. Well, when we started this process in July, and we have been delayed quite a bit because there were some issues with um, the parish not being able to, to get the notice in the paper and then the storm and everything else. So when we filed this back in July, we were advised by the parish that road first, subdivision second. So that's why we're following the, the directives of the parish. Uh, my, my only, yeah, it, it's just <laughs> difficult, but I mean, I'm, I'm standing before you saying it's going to get done. We wanted it done yesterday because we can't even fence it. And I've got a, you know, I've got a tractor sitting out there with no security and I can't, I can't build, I can't do anything until it gets done. So whatever the commission's pleasure is, as long as I can get moving and not like a year from now, like just get going. Um, we did file in July under this this order because that's what we were told was the best way to the best way to handle this. Thank you. Okay, Commissioner Fitzmars. Yeah, two things. So you would come back, but this revocation has to go to the Paris Council first. 
So if it didn't get approved there, she wouldn't be able to do the minor subdivision into one lot. So that's why it's the chicken and the egg. Oh, thank you. Multiple processes <laughs> to get it done, yes. but I think it'll get done. Okay. Okay, Commissioner Seeger. To the best of my understanding, my motion needs to be amended. Yes. To clarify that it's sub the approval is subject to the staff comments. So moved. Okay. We have uh, an amended motion, uh, and we have the uh, on the floor, uh, Commissioner Crawford. Second the motion. Second the motion as amended. All right. Any further discussion? Please vote. The motion to approve subject to sta staff comments carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's see. We postponed item three to our tabled item three to the end of the meeting. So we'll go to item four, 2021-2513-MSP. MSP. A minor subdivision of lots 3X, 3Y, and partial 4C into lots 3X1 and 4C1. Owner and representative is Pat Patrick T. Frazier Orr and Robin Frazier Orr and Wayne A. Ponsa and Aura S. Ponsa and Matthew Nemi and Allison Nemi. Parish Council District Representatives, Honorable Marty Dean. General location, the parcel's located on the south side of uh, Godet Court, east of Louisiana Highway 1085, Madisonville, Ward 1, District 1. Staff? The applicant is requesting to create three lots from lots 3X, 3Y, and parcel 4C. The minor subdivision requests require public hearing considering that parcels for previously part of lot line adjustments approved in 2007 and 2017, and the request shall be subject to adding the signature line for the chairman of the planning commission. Okay. Is anyone here representing the owners? Please come forward. Okay. Please come forward. State your name and address, please. Because I don't know which one you are. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, Wayne Ponsa. I'm presently living in Destrehan, Louisiana. Okay. All right. You in agreement with the staff comments? Which was, sir? The staff comments. I didn't quite understand it. Okay. Uh, what Ms. Lambert uh, had read. Yes. Okay. I understand. All right. And I agree. You agree? Yes, all sir. Right, good deal. And you're representing the, all the owners, right? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. In the audience, is there anyone <coughs> who wishes to speak in favor on this? Anyone wish to speak against? I'll close the floor to the public, bring it back to the commission. <coughs> Commissioner Barcel, uh, Commissioner Fitzmaurice. Motion to approve. Motion by Commissioner Fitzmaurice to approve. Commissioner Barcelona. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Please vote. The motion to approve carries. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Now, this, this will go to the council for uh, final approval. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. All right. Next item is item five. 2021-2518-MSP, a minor subdivision of lot A1 and 1.009 acres into lot A1-2, owner and representative Joe and Jew uh, LLC, Joe Maggio, Parish Council District Representative Honorable David Fitzgerald, general location, the parcel located on the south side of Louisiana Highway 36, west of Camellia Drive, uh, Covington, Ward 3, District 2. Staff? The applicant is requesting to create one lot from lot A1 
in 1.009 acres. The minor subdivision request requires public hearing due to the fact that parcel A-1 was previously part of a minor subdivision approved in October 2016. And the request shall be subject to providing the chair, uh, signature line for the chairman of the planning commission. Thank you. Anyone in the audience representing the, uh, the owners? Good evening, sir. Good evening. Joe Maggio. Okay. Um, you have comments for us? Uh, yeah, all I'm trying to do is just connect the two lots. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's <coughs> makes it too simple. All right. All right, let's see if there's anyone else in the audience that wishes to speak on this. Does anyone wish to speak in favor on this item? Anyone wish to speak against? I'll close the floor to the public, bring it back to the commission. Commissioner Seeger. Um, I move to approve. Motion by Commissioner Seeger to approve. Commissioner Willie. Second. Second by Commissioner Willie. Any further discussion? Please vote. Thank you. The motion to approve carries. Thank you. All right, the next item is uh, item six, which is 2021-2522-MSP, a minor subdivision of 1.10 acres uh, and 1.14 acres in the parcels A, B, and C. The owner is Abbey Land and Properties, LLC, Vaughn Knight. Uh, representative uh, is Paul J. Marone. Parish Council District Representative is Honorable Mike Marino. Uh, general location, parcels located on the east side of Gitz Lane, uh, south of Brewster Road, Madisonville, Ward 1, District 4. Staff? The applicant is re requesting to create three parcels from a 1.1 acre parcel and a 1.14 acre parcel. The minor subdivision request requires a public hearing due to parcel A and C do not meet the minimum lot size of one acre under required under the minor subdivision regulations and requiring a waiver of the regulation by the Planning Commission. And parcel B is proposed to be created as a flag lot requiring a waiver of the regulation by the Planning Commission since flag lots are only permitted above the urban growth boundary line. The request shall be subject to the above listed comments and also items one, two, and three. Thank you. Mr. Marone. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Members of the commission, Paul Marone on behalf of Mr. Knight and Abbey Land and Properties, LLC. Uh, this property along Gitz Lane, uh, which was originally two parcels of ground, uh, has been owned by my client for about 15 years, uh, in about 2004, 2005. Um, in accordance with regulations of the parish at that time, he permitted and constructed the three houses that you see on the minor subdivision plat. Those houses are, are there now. Um, the property is zoned A3, so the minimum lot size requirement is a half acre. Uh, since 2004, 2005, when the uh, homes were constructed, they have been rental units. Uh, the request this evening uh, is to resubdivide so that we can convert what has been historically rental units to owner-occupied units so that he can sell the homes with the parcels uh, and the owners can occupy those homes. Um, in regards to the staff comments uh, and item one about the one acre lot size in the minor subdivision, um, Ms. Lambert is correct, um, and we do uh, ask for a waiver on that. I would point out, though, that the underlying zoning for this par these parcels is A3, so the minimum lot size under the existing zoning is a half acre, and we meet or exceed that lot size with each of the three parcels that, that you see on our plat. Parcels A and C are right at a half acre, while parcel B um, is 1.23 acres. So we meet or exceed. Uh, the minor lot size or the minimum lot size under the zoning that is in place. With regards to um, the comment uh, regarding the flag lot, this issue really dovetails with what you all were grappling with somewhat in the first case, which was the text change. And it was mentioned a couple of times during that discussion that sometimes servitudes, while they serve a, a great function and purpose, can be confusing to people. 
if it was the decision of the commission not to allow the flag lot, that would mean then that we would simply have to access lot B uh, through a servitude. So rather than having ownership of lot B go all the way down and touch Gitts Road or Gitts Lane, uh, we would simply have to create a servitude over parcel A or parcel C or perhaps both that would then provide a driveway uh, to get to parcel B. We're asking for the flag lot because we want to avoid that confusion. We think it would be cleaner going forward for the, for the owners of all of the parcels, A, B, and C, if they did not have a servitude uh, of access overlapping any of the parcels. As we're proposing it now, uh, the driveway for parcel B will be owned by the owner of parcel B. Uh, likewise, parcels A and C would not be encumbered by any driveway servitude. Uh, with that being said, uh, we would respectfully request your approval. We understand the other three comments, and we will make the changes to the plat accordingly. Um, I would just again say uh, we're not bringing any new homes to the, the area. These homes are existing, have been there for 15 years. We just want to make them owner-occupied units as opposed to rental units. We thank you for your consideration. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Marone. Anyone in the audience wish to speak for or against on this item? I'll close it to the public and bring it back to the commission. Commissioner Willie. Uh, Paul, I have a question. You're talking about the homes that are existing um, for 15 years or so? Yes. Um, it was it's originally it's two parcels, right? Correct. Uh, zone day three. So how did how did we get the four buildings on the two parcels? So one of the buildings is just a shed. Mm -hmm. The at the upper left hand corner where it's just identified as a building. It's a, it, it's a shed, so it's okay. not a residence. The other three are residences. Under the A3 zoning, you can, only, you can have one resident for every half acre of property. Okay. So we had enough property that we met those requirements and could construct three homes on this site. So you put two homes in one lot, basically. Correct. That, that, that's that was correct. legal at the time. That's correct. Okay. And that would still be legal today. We, would still, we could still do that. Okay. We would just have to resubdivide it to be able to make it owner occupied as opposed to rental. I move for approval. Motion by Commissioner Willie to approve. Commissioner Barcelona. Second. Second by Commissioner Barcelona. Commissioner Rest. Yeah, Paul, one question on the driveway. Uh, no yes. The driveway is going back to the see so what's the plan there yeah I'm glad I'm glad you I meant to mention that uh, in my presentation uh, Miss Lambert noted that in her staff comments and we're going to relocate that drive um, the where it crosses over parcel C in that back corner so that uh, it does not encroach so the new driveway will be constructed completely within the boundaries of parcel B thank you okay the motion as I understand it uh, is with waivers Okay, all right. So we have a motion and a second with waivers. Any further discussion? Please vote. The motion to approve with waivers carries. Thank you. All right, item seven is 2021-2524-MSP, a minor subdivision of 14 point one eight acres into lots one, two, three, four, and five. Owner and representative is CF Properties Louisiana LLC, Joshua uh, Folkway, Parcel Council District, uh, Parish Council District Representative on Riker Caldano. Uh, general location, the parcel is located on the north side of Lotus Road, east of Louisiana Highway 59, Mandeville, Ward 4, District 5. Staff. The applicant is requesting to create five parcels from 14.18 acres. The minor subdivision request requires a public hearing due to lot two is proposed to be accessed from a 40 foot servitude, a private road, and lot one does not meet the minimum lot width of 150 feet required under the A2 suburban zoning district and requiring a waiver of the regulation from the planning commission. The request shall be subject to uh, the above item and also item one, two, three, and four. Okay, thank you. Good evening, sir. Please state your name. Josh Foke, Covington, Louisiana. Okay. 
What you gonna tell us? Uh, <clears throat> this is four different parcels that we're making five. Um, the four parcels are not organized uh, effectively. Um, two of them don't have road frontage. So what we're doing is trying to clean up the four parcels uh, combined. Um, lot one is already of record. Um, it does go back all the way to the existing carport that you see in the back and shoots across to create that triangle lot that's in the back. So lot one right now goes back um, all the way to that existing carport. We're gonna we're looking at pulling that up to make the four lots across the uh, front flush. Um, so lot one is already recorded at the 115 feet uh, width. And so we're not, we're not changing anything but the depth of lot one for how it's currently uh, rec recorded. Uh, the was here, I think in July to get the variance for the pond. Um, so y'all approve that to get, let that go over the boundary lines. And Mr. Rod Rodriguez provided the um, agreement for that uh, variance. So um, we're just trying to subdivide it and make it look functional. Okay. Anything else? No, sir. All right. Let's see if anyone in the audience wishes to speak for or against on this. Seeing no one, I will close it to the public and bring it back to the commission. Commissioner Fitzmars. Motion to approve with the waiver. Motion by Commissioner Fitzmars to approve with the waivers. Commissioner McInnes. I have a question regarding the survey. Um, I guess for staff or whoever can answer. Um, I'm just curious uh, where it shows the flood zones. It's got the lower flood zone separates C from B. I never hear of flood zone B. I hear of A and C. I was curious about that. But then the one above has a flood zone line, but it has B on both sides. Is that an error? Why would you have a line if it's the same flood zone each side of the line? Staff, do you have a comment? I believe it may be an error. Or a typo. Yeah, I just wanted to point. You might want to get that fixed. I'll ask Kelly McHugh. I'm, um, I'm not sure. That doesn't look right. Um, but I'll, I'll second the motion with the waivers. Okay. We have a motion and a second with waivers. Any further discussion? Please vote. Motion to approve with waiver carries. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. All right. Next item is item 8, 2021-2530-MSP, 20, a minor subdivision of parcels C, D, and E and the parcels C1 and D1. Owner and representative is uh, Maddie Poole, uh, Parish Council District Representative, Honorable Martha Casabon, general location, Parcel is located on the north side of Joyner Weimer Road, west of Louisiana Highway 1077, Covington, Ward 1, District 3. Staff? The applicant is requesting to create two parcels from three parcels. The minor subdivision request requires a public hearing due to parcels C, D, and E were previously part of a minor subdivision approved in August 2020. Thank you. Good evening, ma'am. Hello, I'm Maddie Pauls and I own the minor subdivision on Joyner Weimer Road. Currently, I have three lots to the east of my house. I have two prospective buyers who preferred larger lots, so I'm asking that we make two lots out of the three. And this would provide for less density and I think um, keep the lots in harmony with the other lots in the neighborhood. Thank you for your consideration. Okay, thank you. Anyone else in the audience wish to speak for or against on this item? Seeing no one, I'll close it to the public and bring it back to the commission. Commissioner Willie. I move for approval. Motion by Commissioner Willie, 
uh, to approve Commissioner Barcelona. Second. Second by Commissioner Barcelona. Any further discussion? Please vote. The motion to approve carries. Thank you. All right. Next item is item nine. 2021-2537-MSP, a minor subdivision of parcel three, being 2.45 acres into parcels 3A and 3B. Owner and representative is Sean G. and Tara Courage, uh, Parish Council District Representative, Honorable David Fitzgerald. General location, the parcels located on the east side of Louisiana Highway 437, south of Knights Road. Covington Ward 2 District 2 staff. The applicant is requesting to create two parcels from parcel C. If you notice on the survey, the, the objective of the request is to create a parcel for the existing single family residents and one for the existing business. The minor subdivision request requires a public hearing due to parcel 3A and 3B do not meet the minimum lot width of 200 feet required under the A1A Suburban Zoning District and requires a waiver from the Planning Commission. Thank you. Good evening, sir. Good evening. I'm Sean Corrigé, and I'm the owner of the, uh, of the parcel. Okay. 2.45 acres, we're just similarly, we're just looking to split it because we also have a prospective buyer for the uh, 3B parcel possibility, and that would be it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Does anyone else in the audience wish to speak for or against on this item? Seeing no one, I will close it to the public and bring it back to the commission. Commissioner Crawford. Motion to approve. Motion by Commissioner Crawford to with approve. The waivers. With the waivers. With the waiver. With the waivers, okay. Uh, Commissioner Willie. Second. Second by Commissioner Willie. Any further discussion? Please vote. The motion to approve with waivers carries. Okay. Thank you. All right, we'll go to uh, resubdivision review. Item 10, 2021-2506-MRP, resubdivision of lots 6, 7, 8, and 9 into lots 7A and 9A, Magnolia Trace subdivision, Owner and representative, FMG slash LTL, uh, comma LLC, Toby J. Lowe and Fred H. Goodson and Benjamin R. Dav Davia and Robin, Robin Jones Davia uh, and Donald J. LeBlanc and Ruby A. LeBlanc, surveyors J.B. Burks and Associates, uh, Parish Council District Representative, Honorable Mike Smith. General location, the parcels are located on the west side of Taylor Drive, south of Morgan Bluff Road, Pearl River, Ward 8, District 9. Staff? The owner is requesting to create three lots from three existing lots of records. The public hearing is required considering that, as stated in the rest restrictive covenant of the approved plat, no lot shall be further resubdivided without approval from the Planning Commission. Thank you. Mr. Davis, you wish to speak? Yes, sir. Don't forget, out, forget to fill out a speaker card. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I didn't fill one out. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the Commission. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to appear before you in reference to some family property. In summary, we're basically taking three lots, three small lots, and making them into two big lots. So that's kind of what we're doing. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Anyone else in the audience wish to speak for or against on this? Seeing no one, I'll close it to the public and bring it back to the commission. Commissioner Crawford. Big lots are good. I motion to approve. Motion by Commissioner Crawford to approve. Commissioner Barcelona. Second. Second by Commissioner Barcelona. Any further discussion? Please vote. The motion to approve carries. Thank you. 
Okay. Thank you. Uh, we took care of the text change. Uh, we have no tentative subdivision review or preliminary subdivision review or final subdivision review. The old business, item 12, a minor subdivision of parcel 3A into parcels 3A1, 3A2, 3A3, 3A4. Owner and representative is Fitzjackal LLC, Clark P. Uh, you. Parish Council District Representative, Honorable David Fitzgerald. General location, the parcel's located on the north side of uh, Johnson Road and on the east side of Louisiana Highway 437, Covington, Ward 3, District 2. Staff? The applicant originally requested to create five parcels from Parcel 3A. Um, you may recall that earlier this summer, uh, the survey was submitted to create five parcels, and I, I attached a copy of the survey um, to your staff report. And now the petitioner is uh, coming back and requesting to reduce this number to a total of four, which we no longer uh, need any variance request. And uh, the public hearing is due to the fact that parcel 3A was previously part of a minor subdivision. Thank you. All right. Uh Clark uh, P. Fitzhugh. Good evening, sir. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Park McEnery. I represent the ownership. Please uh, excuse my attire this evening. I'll let Helen know I had to get here quickly from a flag football practice. So, um, as Helen said, or as Ms. Lambert said, we are um, coming back to, to resubmit um, a lower density plan. Um, previously, we had two lots that fronted on Johnson Road. Um, and the reason for the, the new plan is that we have a 20 acre parcel essentially that was previously um, shaped between two 10 acre parcels. Um, but there was, there's a really scenic pond on the north end of one of the parcels. And there's a technical requirement that um, any pond be a certain number of feet from a property boundary, which was the middle boundary of the two 10 acre parcels. So to eliminate that, um, the need for another variance or uh, any concern related to that setback requirement, we simply just created one 20 acre parcel. And uh, we've got that parcel under contract for an estate homeowner who wants to build a nice house out there. Um, and this will, this will leave us with three other parcels. And again, as Helen pointed out, um, as we made that change to the plan, um, the three remaining parcels all meet the, the lot requirements uh, for frontage and, and size and everything else. There's no variances required. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, is there anyone in the audience who wish to speak for or against on this item? Seeing no one, I'll close it to the public and bring it back to the commission. Commissioner Fitzmore. Motion to approve. Motion by Commissioner Fitzmore to approve. Commissioner Randolph. Second. Second by Commissioner Randolph. Any further discussion? Please vote. The motion to approve carries. Thank you. Next item is item 13, 2019-1494-PP. Uh, Bellevue Estates, developer owners, Bellevue Estates 59 LLC. Engineers, Kelly McHugh and Associates, Parish Council District Representative, Honorable James Davis. General location, the property is located on the south side of Hoffman Road, east of Louisiana Highway 59, Vita Springs. Uh, Ward 4, District 7, developers requesting an extension of the preliminary approval. Staff? Can you hear me? Okay. This office is in receipt of Mr. Paul Marone's request to extend the preliminary approval date for Bellevue Estate Subdivision. This office has reviewed Mr. Marone's request and has no objection to a six-month extension of the preliminary approval. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Marone. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Paul Marone on behalf of Bellevue Estates, LLC. Um, we have been working with the Corps uh, to get our Corps permit, which uh, extended beyond um, the period that we had 
thought that it might, uh, which gave rise to the need for our requested extension. Uh, we do now, since we made the request back in August, we have now received the core permit, fortunately. We do still need the request because of the time frame that has passed so that we uh, can still work with the staff to be able to get our work order and be able to proceed. Uh, so at this point, that's all we need to be able to uh, procure the work order and get started. So we ask for your consideration of uh, the extension under those circumstances. Thank you, Mr. Rohn. Thank you. Anyone in the audience wish to speak for or against on this item? Seeing no one, I'll close it to the public and bring it back to the commission. Commissioner Willie. Move to approve the six-month extension. Motion by Commissioner Willie uh, to approve the six-month extension. Commissioner Crawford. Second the motion. Commissioner Crawford seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Please vote. Motion carries to approve the six-month extension. Okay, thank you. All right, the next item is item 14, entering parish right-of-way, uh, resolution number 16-020 H Street slash Alexisville subdivision, the debtor, DMM Construction, LLC, uh, Mr. Mike Martin, Engineer Kelly McEwen Associates, uh, Parish Council District Representative Honorable David Fitzgerald. Uh, general location, the property is located east of U.S. Highway 190, north of Highway, uh, north of 9th Avenue, uh, Covington, Ward 3, District 2. The developer requesting an extension of time to complete work. Uh, staff? Yes, sir. This is an open portion of H Street was adopted on February 10th. The resolution was adopted on February 10th, 2016. Resolution states that the petitioner must submit all documentation required within six months from date of adoption. Additionally, petitioner has two years to complete all work on this project. If not completed within two years, approval of this work will be voided and petitioner will be required to reapply for permission. The completion date for this project has been extended previously four times with the latest extension stating the work must be completed by September 12th, 2021. As of the date of this letter, our office has not received certification from the petitioner's engineer that the work has been completed. The petitioner's attorney, Mr. Jeff Shane, has requested an extension of time to complete the work. This office has reviewed Mr. Shane's request and has no objection to a one-year extension of time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Shane. Uh, Jeff Shane of the Junction Cell Law Firm at P.O. Box 1810 in Covington, uh, representing Mike Martin and DMM Construction. Uh, as um, Ms. Tatisha has read the history of this project, uh, the extensions in the earlier years were because the project had never begun. It wasn't that the work had begun and we weren't able to get it completed. In fact, at one time, rather than getting um, a continued extension by appearing under old business. We actually refiled uh, because the code required that and came back before you and got an extension. The good news I bring tonight is that we are, were very close in being finished uh, by the September date, but for some delays brought about by bad weather uh, this summer and some other COVID issues, not necessarily of my client, but in terms of getting materials and getting certain subs uh, out on the job to finish it. So um, we appreciate staff's recommendation of the extension. I'm very confident that we'll be finished in a very short period of time uh, because the work is, is underway. Okay, thank you, Mr. Shane. All right, is there anyone in the audience that wishes to speak for or against on this item? You folks wish to speak for or against? Okay. All right. Seeing no one, I'll close it to the public and bring it back to the commission. Commissioner Seeger. As per staff uh, comments, move to approve. Motion by Commissioner Seeger to approve the one-year extension. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Commissioner Randolph. Is that second? Second by Commissioner Randolph. And I think you explained the previous holdup on the thing, so we don't have to go through all that. 
Any further discussion? We have a motion and a second. Those are different ones. This must be for the next okay. meeting. Please vote. The motion to approve with the one year extension uh, carries. Thank you. All right, we have no new business on this agenda. And because there are two different agendas involved, we have to, uh, to take an adjournment and give. We have to go back to number three. Oh, yes, yes, thank you. Did you ever get in touch with your. Get the mic. But um, Helen was correct as usual. And um, they have asked for it to be withdrawn. Some additional complications came up. So um, uh, it is uh, that the owner is requesting to withdraw it. So, but because it's a neighbor and a potential conflict for me, I'm not going to make the motion. Okay. It's, yeah. it's being withdrawn oh. by staff. Oh, okay. okay. So we don't need a motion or anything on that. Okay. Thank y'all. I need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. Okay.